In its quest to provide an open forum for discussion of controversial issues, this station allows hosts and their guests to express themselves without any significant censorship. You are advised that any view expressed by the host or their guest are not necessarily the views of the owners or management of Toginet Radio, Togi Entertainment, or the Owners Group, Inc. It's time for Motherhood Talk Radio, the most powerful voice in women's issues today, with Sandra Beck and Christy Holly. Ladies, Motherhood Talk Radio is here to give you a powerful platform by giving you interesting, inspiring, and influential information as you navigate everything from childcare to corporate formation. Motherhood Talk Radio has interviews with best-selling authors, gurus of happiness, and women of interest who every single day make our world a better place for our families. Motherhood Talk Radio, powered by Motherhood Incorporated, is on the air now. Moms, this really is your show. Motherhood Talk Radio. And now, here are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Christy Holly. Hey, Mamas, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here today with Christy Holly and Rick Swanson. And we have such a fun show today. I'm excited about this one. Are you? Are you? I, I thought you might be. I am a little excited. <laughs> I told you. I, I called it. <laughs> what do we call? This is up my alley. <laughs> well, we have Rachel uh, Braun Sherl, who's coming on from uh, Zestra Corporation, and or Zestra is the product line. I think Sempre is the company, but she'll clarify that later when she comes on. But uh, we're going to talk about products that enhance our lives. And um, before we talk about that product, let's talk about some of the products. What's in your purse there, Christy? What's that big box of stuff? Well, what do you think? Big box. <laughs> it's a ch- it's oh, it's like a Lindora shake and Uh-oh. like all kinds of aspartame things to go in my drink. Things that I sh- aren't healthy for me, but are healthy for me. So are you on Lindora? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that and I thought, well, she probably use it up. Oh, it's from a previous. Yeah. I previous see. try at it. Oh, okay, because I was, like, going, you know, sometimes different products, what I really like, are being carried in Walmart and Target, and, you know, it's much more convenient than having to go to, like, the Lindora location. Yeah, these are carried at Rite Aid, like, some of the Lindora products. My husband was on it, oh, I don't know, years ago, and then he found out that they were at, no, they're at Thrifty. Oh, okay. Is that Rite Aid now? I don't know. I don't know either, but that's where they are. All I know is I'm eating some Easter chocolate. It's pretty darn good. <laughs> I know. I saw it try and roll away from you, and you picked it up. I did. I did the three-second roll. <laughs> fell right on the carpet, ate it anyway. But we do do a lot. We do use a lot of different products to enhance ourselves. I know recently, because the sun's coming out, and I am pigmently challenged. I am, too. Yeah, but you always get a little color, don't you? I know, because my freckles make me have color. That's true. That's true. Uh-huh. But... The self-tanning stuff helps a lot. I mean, I found that, like, the spray stuff works really good. Like, you can spray it and mist it and walk under it. And it gives you, like, that nice little sun-kissed golden glow. I have to say that it did. I saw you after you had done it, and you were a little glowing. Oh, yeah. I looked better than my usual pasty white Casper self. You did. You looked, like, refreshed and, like, <laughs> covers up how tired I am. <laughs> well, yeah. Well. You sprayed in the air. Uh huh. Did you walk through it? Uh huh. Oh, well, I do it in my shower. So wrong then. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. I thought you just like sprayed it on you. What do like, you do? About the, what kind of stuff? Like the spray in the can? The aerosol. Oh, okay. I was thinking like the gel stuff. I was like, how do you spray that and walk through it? Like, uh. <laughs> Very carefully. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like can block, like <laughs> like a graffiti on your own body. No, it was an art to using the self tanning gels too. The gels are the hardest for me. Yes, those are horrible. I'm going to have to say, oh, yeah, right. I've never tried it yet. You sure. did? Uh-uh. I'm oh, I use it all the time. I use it all summer long. Oh, well, maybe this summer is my new, my new thing. Yeah, no, I'll put it on you. I'm, I'm really good at applying it. And um, it's hard because you have to get your own, like, to do your own back. That's why using the aerosol, like, you spray it, you go, Shh, then you, like, lean forward like that, and it rains down on your back, and it's You're all nice and even. You're not breathing right? Yes, my lungs are very tan. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I was I thinking my about that. It's like, oh. And I do it in the shower so that I can use, like, the shower head to wash down the whole, um, you know, to wash down all the stuff all over. <laughs> but it works for the back of your legs, too, like, in your butt. Like, places that are really hard to get with gel, you know, the spray works really good. How do you get your arm back there? 
carefully. Communion. No, okay. you bend over like this, like bend over at the waist and you go, like you're putting hairspray on your But back. how do you get it to apply evenly? It's like, think if you're painting a car, a car, a paint gun, like, how well, do you get it to apply evenly? It, it's just like, blow it up in the air. I mean, it's like, you know, you're not blowing, like, you know, lots of mayonnaise in the air. This is an aerosol. So it, yeah. it kind of <laughs> rains down. I don't know. It works. I'll try it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What else do you use um, to enhance? I dye my eyebrows and my eyelashes. I do that every month. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, because otherwise I have no features. I use like therapy products. That's the really good smelling um, creams that I have in here, those big tubs. I haven't used that yet. Ah, oh, they're very good. I like body butter. <gasps> body butter is really good. It's body so, butter is yummy. So I almost ate the chocolate one. I mean, it's so good. You I could like the coconut eat it. is my favorite. Oh, the coconut's very nice, yeah. too. Did you use that when you were pregnant? I used those for stretch marks. I used the Palmer's stretch mark cream. Mm. I don't know if it worked or not, but... I don't know. I mean, I don't, didn't have any stretch marks, but I don't know if I would not have had them. Anyway, I don't know either. I used yeah. them for my first pregnancy, and then I didn't use it after. Really? And I didn't get crazy stretch marks or anything. I didn't get stretch marks either. I think I, I attribute it to all the cream I put on there. Yeah. That and the fact that I delivered two <laughs> premature babies. <laughs> I never had to get, like, really huge, but... You know, we do. We use all sorts of products to enhance our lives. Oh, Monster? <laughs> I'm a big monster fan now. And um, what's the other one I like? Oh, the nitro. I had like six nitro one weekend, like two weekends ago. I don't think I've ever had six in a weekend. No, oh, well, you're not as excessive as I am. <laughs> I thought it was, but apparently no. <laughs> I just got you hooked on it, and then I quit. I know, <laughs> I know. I do. I get people hooked on stuff, and then I'm like, eh, I'm done now. I know. Well, all of a sudden, my husband used to drink them a lot, and all of a sudden he's like, they're bad for you. Like since when? Oh, and now that you drink them? I know, I know. It's a lot, like, jerk. Uh, <laughs> so I can't buy a case of them. So you can't. I've tried to buy a case. I have gone all over, like Sam's Club, Costco. Well, they have they sell them, them like but four, like right? Thirty dollars. No, they have a case of them. Where? Where? At Costco oh, and at Costco. Sam's Club. See, I couldn't find the n- n- my, n- monsters they have. They have nitros? No, not nitro. Monster. See, nitro's my favorite. The green one that looks like like it's like Mountain Dew on speed. Oh, I've not had that. Yes, you did. You had it with me and Rick that time when we were making fun of Rona, who might come back to do a cameo because she's, <laughs> <laughs> she's back in town for the Fit to Strip Challenge. Oh, I think I might have been on a diet and not had that that day. Rick, didn't she have one? It was the two of us. It was me and Christy and you on the couch in my living room in front of the Wii drinking that, nitro and eating chips. That was last year, right? Yeah. Yes, Christy yeah. had one. You had a nitro. It's a great oh, can. Did. Oh, that's when I couldn't sleep. That's when yes, I was like, hey, <laughs> you guys were both texting like insane. I was like, I'm like okay, what's going on? Like, yes, oh. I'm like, I'm going to kill you because yeah. I am up at 3 o'clock in the morning and I cannot sleep. Yes. That's what happened to me with FinFen. Did you ever try FinFen? No, I didn't. Oh, I um, I was working in Beverly Hills, and we had this doctor that took care of everybody, and so he wrote prescriptions. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice to all the girls, and I got home, and there was like, I forget, like, you're supposed to take the blue one or the yellow one, but I reversed them. Uh-oh. And at like 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm watching Gilligan's Island <laughs> reruns <laughs> on some channel, going, I can't sleep, I can't sleep, no wonder you lose weight, you know, and then I took the other one, I'm like... <sighs> You know, and I, of course, missed a day of work, and I blame my boss because she's the one who called the doctor in to give everybody the prescription. Everybody's getting a little too chunky, huh? Uh-huh. It worked. I know, it did. It worked, it just, but it made you speed. I mean, it was was not good. Um, I, actually, it's kind of fun, but... <laughs> <laughs> totally got things done, huh? I did. I had a clean house, clean car. My work was done. I mean, you don't talk about, you know, super speedy computer programming. I'm like... Bloop, 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 bloop. Oh, look, I just wrote 40,000 lines of code in the last hour. <laughs> they should make that legal. And we'd all get so much stuff done. Can you imagine? Well, you know, a lot of my friends take um, ADD medication to keep their weight down. and really? um Yeah, and they get a lot more done in their household. Um, yeah, they They're taking, weight. They're totally taking their kids' medication. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm not saying I endorse that, but, yeah, they do. They do. We are not endorsing that. So we're not endorsing it, but it does keep your weight down, and yes. Well, so do tapeworms, but... I, don't really want I know one you of could those. totally eat those. Eat the eggs, I think. Where do you get that? Eat the worms. No, there's the person that grows them. I thought there's, there's, there's people. There's people. There's people. Like down in, I'm not sure if it's Hollywood, but there's restaurants that you can actually order like a cut of meat that you'll get the tapeworm. 
so then it eats away. Like the food you ingest, it eats that, so then you start losing weight. And then you got to get rid of the tapeworm. How do you get rid of the tapeworm? It comes out. It comes out. Goes Where? In and goes comes out the Roundabout. Like when my golden retriever ate the pantyhose that way? Yeah. You know, she ran and I was holding it. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> no, that's so gross. Yeah, but it went, they went all the way through hole, like and all. Yeah, and the tapeworms are so super long. I mean, they're tapeworms. Right. Like, like, like a foot long, long or are they like? They're, uh, like the tape measure. Like they, I saw it on um, Dr. Oz, I think it was. Wow. They had them holding it. It went all clear across the audience. And they were asking wow. people if they would consider, like, doing stuff extreme. Well, people were doing extreme stuff yeah. to lose weight, and that was one of them. They were there. They had a grower there that would grow the worms and sell them to people to ingest them. Wow, I know. I think I'll just stop eating chocolate. We have no patience. I think as society anymore, we want everything like tomorrow. No, yeah. now. Oh. Not tomorrow. No. Not <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> now. Now. We want it now. Yesterday. <laughs> yes. Yesterday. That's what exactly. I meant. Yes. No, we have to, like, we want everybody's, you know, look on the Internet. There's all these, like, magical diet plans, and there's only 10 minutes a day, and you could lose 40 pounds in two days. What? <laughs> let's get that. All right, let's get that one. <laughs> yeah, but I watched you, like, Rick, you, like, lost a lot of weight. I mean, you just, you just like, took it and stuffed it under your muscles or something. I don't know. It happened a lot more fast. A lot faster for you than it has for me. Oh well, yeah, I just I just upped my exercising sometimes twice a day, and then I just really cut my calorie intake. That's really it. No tapeworms. <laughs> Liar. Two liars. Want to check? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We have friends, but That's too that friendly. I'm not going to no. pull anything out of there. No. I will do it for you. I will be the friend in need. I will be the friend indeed. Um, <laughs> um, thank <laughs> you. If it means pulling the tapeworm, I'm your girl. Uh, nice. My name is Sandra Beck. I am the host of Motherhood Talk Radio. <laughs> Christy Holly and Rick Swanson. When we come back after the break, we will be welcoming Rachel Braun Sherl of Zestra. And, um, oh, we're going to have so much fun because this topic is something that is just goes right along with the things we do to enhance ourselves. What do you think, Christy? I think we're all, she's on to something. <laughs> all right, we'll catch you after the break. <laughs> Mom, here's your show, Motherhood Talk Radio, giving you interesting, inspiring, and influential information as you navigate everything from child care to corporate formation. This is Motherhood Talk Radio, and we'll be right back after these. Join us for Self-Aid Success Stories with Helen Wu, Wednesday nights at 10, 9 central on toginet.com. Helen Wu was born and raised in San Francisco's Chinatown, and after a very difficult upbringing, fighting depression, abuse, and addictions, she finally finds herself genuinely happy inside and out. Helen believes in taking our positive thinking and doing something positive to achieve a positive outcome. She's here to make a positive difference in your life, to be your game changer, your aha moment mentor. She's ready to help both men and women get into a better place. Helen Wu is also the author of Self-Aid Success Stories, 25 Success Stories from Successful Entrepreneurs. Inspired by Ellen DeGeneres, Helen wants the world to know that just because we find ourselves in a difficult situation doesn't mean we have to stay there. We can aid ourselves to a better life. So join us for Self-Aid Success Stories with Helen Wu. Wednesday nights at 10, 9 central on toginet.com. The Way of the Toddler with hosts Lita and Lori Hamilton is a show unlike any other parenting program you've ever heard. Zen Masters in Diapers? Yes. Join us Tuesday afternoons at 5, 4 central here on Toginet as we celebrate parenthood as a spiritual path for a journey to inner peace. With thought-provoking and spiritually compelling guests, each week Lita and Lori will explore how our children help us with the lessons we came here to learn, adding deeper meaning to our lives and relationships while giving you valuable gems to add to your unique parenting toolkit. Check out the website, thewayofthetoddler.com. 
With great humor and honesty, Lita and Lori will demonstrate how inner peace is possible, even when surrounded by poopy diapers and piles of laundry, and what we can learn from the innate wisdom and natural spirituality of our Zen masters and diapers. It's The Way of the Toddler with Lita and Lori Hamilton. Tuesday afternoons at 5, 4 Central, here on toginet.com. Welcome back to Motherhood Talk Radio, the most powerful voice in women's issues. For more information, check out the website, motherhoodtalkradio.com. Now, let's get back to the show with your hosts, Sandra Back and Christy Holly. Oh, oh, this is just a show that's going to go so many different ways, I can tell, between the tapeworm and um, Christy. What were you talking about? I We were talking about eggs and egg beaters and blood in the eggs. That's what I was talking about. Okay. Well, now that we've had the grossest show, <laughs> I know that's you not this week. Let's get on to yeah, cantaloupe for your overall health. Okay. All right. We are here uh, on TogiNet Radio with Motherhood Talk Radio, and thankfully Rick has finally hung up his phone. <laughs> Thank so you. So we don't hear the comments from the peanut gallery over there, <clears throat> um, peanut being the operative word. We are welcoming today Rachel Braun Sherl, and she is uh, involved with Zestra. And I am going to let her take the lead on this. And but first, I'm going to ask you, Rachel, you're with us. I'm here. I'm here. There you are. So we had our sillies out. So now we're ready to be even sillier when it comes to um, taking care of ourselves. And we're doing a really good job, both Christy and I. And um, can you give us a rundown quickly, a little bit about yourself and a little bit about uh, your product um, before we get into uh, letting moms know uh, some things before we start our conversation? Sure. Sure. Um, I run a company called Sempre Laboratories, and we make Zestra, which is a product that improves arousal, desire, and sexual satisfaction for women. I run it with um, my business partner of the last 15 years, Mary Yench. So we had a consulting business together for a long time, and I've always focused on women's driven businesses. And as we say, we've dealt with women from the tips of their heads to the tips of their toes. Um, I've been married 21 years as of last Friday. Oh, congratulations. Have, yeah, so I have an own, oh, thank you, I have an almost 16-year-old daughter who's in finishing up 10th grade and a 12-year-old son who's finishing up 6th. Wow. Wow. You're a busy girl. Very busy girl, like all of you, I'm sure. You know, the one thing that I love that I heard in this, and this is one thing Christy and I talk about every once in a while, we have guests on that are uh, women that have worked with other women in long-term relationships. I think of, like, the real estate agents we had, uh, Monica Garcia Greeley and uh, the other ladies. She was so, they were friends for so long, and they worked together, and they kind of dispelled the myth that, you know, women can get, you know, can't get along in business, and women are hard to work with, and you guys have had a success successful business prior to becoming an entrepreneur with your business partner. Yeah, and it is pretty remarkable, I think, man or woman, to have a 15-year partnership that's so successful. And we actually started as work colleagues that have become, obviously, very close friends like family over the past many years. And I went through both my pregnancies uh, while I was working with Mary, and we've seen each other's children grow up, and we've shared fabulous successes with our families and sad times as well. And we joke that the other one is our work wife. Um, <laughs> and, you know, when we, when we travel together, we're just very compatible. And the relationship has always been built just on, you know, true admiration and mutual respect. And it doesn't hurt that we have a good time together. Do you think that's the secret to you guys working together? Do you think it's is it chemistry? Is it you know, I think boundaries? there's a lot of chemistry. I think there's a lot of luck. I think there's a tremendous amount of communication, you know, just like any relationship. Um, we have been extremely lucky. You know, most marriages have many more ups and downs than our work marriage has had. And um, I think we've always both valued the relationship so much that we keep that central to all our decision making. So we make decisions together, we consider each other's feelings, we incorporate the demands of the other one's lives and because we're so, you know, we've had a joint calendar for 15 years. 
So Mary and I know more about the other one's comings and goings than most of the people in our own families. I believe it. I believe it. So she it. knows and when I have a teacher conference. I know when she has a doctor's <laughs> appointment. You know, it's just, and we've always worked so that we could complement each other. You know, when we ran the consulting business together, we wanted to be interchangeable. So even if Mary was running the client engagement and she was out one day, for whatever reason, I could fill the gap. And when you're a small company, that's what you need to do. And I think that the communication and what the people in the office tease us about is we finish each other's sentences, we don't even realize it. So there, you develop a shorthand that's very efficient and effective after, you know, really being in the trenches for so many years together. Well, and it allows you both. Like when you talk about being interchangeable, you know, when you think of traditional role models for, you know, the working community, it's like the man would go to work and he would do his job and the wife would take care of everything at home. Well, now you've got, you know, multiple demands on you because you're not taking care of things at home solely you're now taking care of things at home, taking care of things in your business. So to be able to vacillate between the two of you or to slot each other in as needed would really, I would imagine, make it possible for you guys to be at those things that you really want to or need to be at. We Um, really do keep that as a goal. And, um, you know, Mary's children are older, so she's been at this parenting game longer. So I've looked to her as someone that I could learn lessons from and, you know, watch her mistakes and watch her successes. Uh, And I just, I really do think there's a lot to chemistry and there's a lot to keeping your eye on the goal. And we are both very goal-oriented. And the success of this relationship and and the productivity of the businesses we focused on really were always central to our thinking. And it does help to have similar values. You know, I cannot overstate how important that is that, you know, we're both focused on family, we're both focused on a high moral standard. We, you know, we have, we have similar goals for ourselves and for our kids, and, you know, we are very intertwined in each other's families, and just it's really pretty lucky. And it's, I agree with you. It's hard for women to have such intense relationships for this long, for this many years, and make them successful, and I consider a lot of it luck as well. And most of it is because she's a spectacular person. I think you're both amazing women. I mean, it takes two to tango. You know, I look at marriages, whether they're work marriages, whether they're, you know, obviously physical marriages. And when both parties, like you said, keep the eye on the ball, their moral structures are aligned and their goals are aligned, um, I think it works out really well. I think of you and me, Christy, we're pretty similar in that respect. I think so. You know, and I think chemistry has a lot to do with it because on days where where I fall down or Christy falls down or we go, you know, we're not really sure, you know, who's doing what, you know, that happens, to have a really great like of that person as a person, you know, just that chemistry that just goes, you know what, I'll pick up the, today because I know you'll pick it up tomorrow, and we just keep going on, really makes a difference. Absolutely. And it's just nice to know someone always has your back. Absolutely. Absolutely. And since we've been in this women's focused business, this one in particular, we have met, you know, the most extraordinary women um, who are doing fascinating, interesting things and people that in our entire work careers we had never met before. You know, so many entrepreneurs, so many women um, doing exciting, different things. It's very different than when you're mostly focused on a corporate environment. Well, and don't you think that it's changed? I mean, I've seen a huge change, and I don't know if it's because, you know, I left corporate America to form my own company and to, you know, kind of do things on my own terms. Um, But I think it's, you know, women in business is changing at a rapid pace, and I start seeing women who look like women in the workforce, something (laughs) I didn't see. (laughs) Oh. You know, in years prior, I know the first thing I did, you know, when I left corporate America was like, you know what, I grew out my hippie hair because I was so tired of having it cut and cropped and everything buttoned up. And I thought, you know, I understand I need to be professional in certain circumstances, but at the end of the day, I am who I am. And I think there's a freedom of expression that goes along with the development of women in business these days that hasn't happened historically. Uh, you know, I feel like that there's definitely, I find that it's much more efficient to just be 100% of who I am. And I don't mince words and I don't beat around the bush and this is who I am 
And, you know, the person could like it or not like it, but there's no confusion. And I just find that being that direct, and I don't know if it's more of a female quality than a male quality, but Mary and I both seem to have it, you just, (laughs) we're not confused. We don't like surprises. We try not to create surprises, and we try not to be the recipients of surprises. And I find with, (laughs) you know, just very direct communication, it helps a lot. And I do think once you've been working you know, 20 plus or whatever is the golden number of years, you have developed a style, you have developed a way of interacting with people. And if you're, you know, still in business, the least part of it is working. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. That's true. So, Rachel, what do you want moms to know about you as we start our conversation about your product? I mean, what is, you know, how do we set a baseline for what we're going to talk about today? Well, one of the things that we talk about all the time is, you know, to say that you run a female sexual health business and you have a preteen and a teenager and what we, we refer to ourselves as vagipreneurs. Um, I, 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 would say, <laughs> I love it. You know, I would say the thing that we want people to know, and we joke about this all the time, it's not like, you know, Pamela Sue Anderson and, a, and a, another pinup girl running a female sexual health business. We really come at it as professional business people who found this opportunity and said, wait a second, 43% of women have sexual concerns or difficulties at some point in their life, and all that means is maybe their body doesn't respond the same way because of medication, maybe they're stressed, which only includes every woman on the planet, maybe uh, you know, their oral birth control, their antidepressants, or lowering a libido. This is sort of about every woman. This isn't, what we're really not is, oh, I've conquered the boardroom, now the bedroom. This is really just for every woman, regardless of where she is in her life. The average woman in a committed relationship, not an, there's no such thing as an average woman, a woman <laughs> in a committed relationship has sex or intimate relations on an average of once a week. And at a minimum, we want her to know that there's easy ways to make it enjoyable. Now, lots of women are enjoying fabulous sex lives. And so what we love to say is if it's good, we make it better, and if it's okay, we make it great. Ooh. And it's All great. right. Well, we're going to take a break now, and when we come back, we will welcome Rachel braun Sherl talking to us about Zestra and the uh, why she led a successful consulting business to start her current company. And when we come back after the break, we're also going to hear about some of the favorite parts of her work. <laughs> Mom, here's your show, Motherhood Talk Radio. Giving you interesting, inspiring, and influential information as you navigate everything from child care to corporate formation. This is Motherhood Talk Radio, and we'll be right back after these. Parents, if you feel overloaded, overworked, underappreciated, and seriously stressed out, The Parents Plate is here to help you. The Parents Plate with Brenda Nixon, Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central on Toginet. It's time to build stronger families through parent empowerment, and that's what The Parents Plate does. The Parents Plate understands the busyness of life and balancing child rearing and other commitments. Brenda Nixon will be talking to noted experts and authors on all issues, from teething to teen driving. Brenda Nixon is a nationally recognized speaker to parents and child care professionals and author of the award-winning The Birth to Five book. From Fox 4 in Kansas City to schools and synagogues to businesses to bookstores, conferences to churches, audiences rave that Brenda engages, educates, and encourages. For more information on Brenda and her books, check out her website, brendanixon.com. The Parents Plate is loaded with information and affirmation. The Parents Plate with Brenda Nixon. Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central on Toginet.com. 25 breaks a couple of tackles. And look at him go! He could go all the way! Touchdown! 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 Get ready for some football. 
Talk, that is, with Confessions of a College Football Rules Violator with Lance Siegel on toginet.com Tuesday nights at 11 Central. This is your chance with Lance and his friends to share opinions about last weekend's sporting events. All the sports networks and TV shows have shown their top ten at least a hundred times. And the commentators and guest analysts have gone over every single slow motion instant replay, and yet there are still some of us fans who want to wring the referee's neck or fire the coach or kick the player off the team. So let's do it. Here, with confessions of a college football rules violator. So enjoy next week's games, then be here to talk about them. With Lance, it's cathartic, soul-cleansing, and gives you one more chance to scream about a bad call. It's confessions of a college football rules violator. With Lance Siegel, Tuesday evenings at 11 p.m. Central on toginet.com. Welcome back to Motherhood Talk Radio, the most powerful voice in women's issues. For more information, check out the website, motherhoodtalkradio.com. Now, let's get back to the show with your hosts, Sandra Beck and Christy Holland. Hey, mamas, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Christy Holly. We've given uh, Rick <laughs> some time off. Yes, we have. Yes, to, to cover the topic that we're covering today, we have Rachel braun Sherl of Zestra. And um, Rachel, I want to ask you, what led you to leave a successful consulting business um, that you shared with your longtime partner uh, to become an entrepreneur? <laughs> Depends on the day you ask me. Um, <laughs> some days I would say um, just lack of information, but seriously, when we looked at what was out there for women, and we've worked in so many different categories from skin care to hair care to menstruation, fertility, infertility, psoriasis, you know, serious medical conditions, and when we looked at this category and we were first exposed to it, we couldn't believe that it was one of the only categories we've ever seen where women don't talk to their friends about this and one of the re- in general. And one of the reasons they don't is because, you know, you two probably know each other's spouses very well, and if one of you complains to the other about dissatisfaction and then you're at a movie the next night, it feels <laughs> like a betrayal. You know, it feels different than saying, well, he did a silly thing with the kids or his mother drives me crazy or... You know, he didn't take out the garbage or he's just generally annoying or all the other things that women say when they feel like complaining about their lives. This feels <laughs> true. much true. more personal. The other piece is that women, nor their doctors, feel comfortable talking about this. And one of the things we hear from doctors, whether they're general practitioners or sexual health experts, is the experience they have is, you know, their hands on the door, they're trying to escape before they have to answer some of these questions. We were astounded to learn that only 3 to 5% of obstetricians and gynecologists talk about sexual satisfaction with their patients. They talk about everything else under the sun, pregnancy, infertility, birth control, sexual health, menopause, but are you sexually you ever, active and are you I'm enjoying like, it? I'm like, we're just stumped just, over here. I know. <laughs> my mouth dropped open because, no, I've, none of my doctors ever have talked about that. No, and I went through fertility treatments for both of my kids. I mean, and you can go into you can yeah, you can go into excruciating detail, right? When you're talking about fertility and when you're yes. having sex and the timing, and it becomes very clinical. But when it gets to a conversation about, are you actually enjoying it? Are you reconnecting? You know, are you having? How about even if just are you actually having it? <laughs> well, right. yeah, that it depending on the group and the age of the people that I'm talking to that comes up. And one of the things that we always laugh about is, you know, it's a statistic that the um, a, a woman in a committed relationship has sexual relations an average of once a week, and we hear one of two responses: that's it, or that much. <laughs> <laughs> So it really does depend, but one of the most amazing things that we learned is it really has nothing to do with age. It's not like just women who are going through menopause and have a a lowered estrogen rate and experience vaginal dryness, a lower, I'm sorry, um, a thinning of their estrogen and the vaginal tissue have a lower interest. It's women who are 21 who are on oral birth control It's women who are obese, it's women who have MS, it's women who have diabetes, it's women who have been treated for cancer, whether it's the psychological or the emotional effects. So when you talk about a lower desire or lack of interest or my body doesn't respond the same way, it's almost universal. You know, so we have this joke, if you walked into a room 
and said to, you know, the average group of women, again, whatever that is, how many of you have, you know, female sexual dysfunction? And a thousand of them would look at you and say, what's that? Because that's not even something we think about or know about. And if I walked into that same room two minutes later and said, and said show of hands, does your body take longer? Do you feel like your mind's not in the game? Are you wandering? Do you feel like you can't reach orgasm as often as you used to or as intensely? Pretty much every hand in the room of a woman across an age range would raise her hand if she were being honest. Wow. That, that's true. I would say that would be true. Yeah, I agree. I mean, not that I'm speaking for anybody else, but, <laughs> you know, I mean, we don't, and like you said, you're totally correct when we don't talk about that sort of thing with our friends because it makes us feel not normal. Right. You and, know, it feels, and it feels disloyal. It does. It, it yeah, does. It, does. it feels disloyal. Until you break up with that person. And then, right. And then, then you, you can talk about it. And you tell them everything they yeah. did. <laughs> but what is so funny, what Mary and I find so astounding is wherever we are, whether we're at the gym or in the supermarket or at a work meeting or doing a presentation, the second we start the conversation, there is this huge desire and need to be part of it. So it's not that women aren't interested in talking about it or even being made aware that they have options. It's that there's not an easy way or place to talk about it. You're right. You know, most of the right. conversation for female sexuality tends to be at the extreme of disease or porn. But there's a whole lot of women who want to be somewhere in the middle. I'm in a long-term relationship. How do I enjoy this every time, or how do I enjoy this more? And, you know, when women try Zestra, the most amazing thing about this job is um, the emails we get or the calls we get you know, Zestra saved my marriage, or I haven't had an, orgas- an orgasm in 22 years, or since menopause, I didn't think I, my body could respond, or my husband's smiling, or we get <laughs> letters from men saying, you know, I thought this part of my relationship was dead and gone with my wife. And, wow. you know, the fact that it's brought back with something that's topical and all natural and works in three to five minutes every time, we keep waiting for the other shoe to drop, saying, really, is it that good? And, and, and it is. Well, and it's that easy. I guess that's it's that the thing easy. That, that's what we you know. say. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. It's a low risk, high reward. It's not systemic. You don't swallow it. Um, it's applied topically to the outer lips of the woman's vagina, either by her or by her partner. She starts to feel something in three to five minutes, you know, a huge proportion of our buyers are men also because the idea that, you know, better sex effortlessly, sign me up for some of that. Yeah, who doesn't want that? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> exactly. And the reaction you're happy, having and the giggling and the, and, and the smiles, that's what happens every time we create a forum for women to talk about sexual satisfaction. It's true. I mean, you look at the two of us. And <laughs> both both of are like, silent. <laughs> you know, giggling away. We ask for if there's such a thing that you could hear a smile in someone's voice, I hear smiles in your voices. It's just a yes, fun, you do. happy <laughs> thing to talk about. That doesn't mean that there aren't women in relationships that are having real challenges in this area. But the big problem historically has been no options. You know, right. The other thing we joke about, and, and you definitely do have to have a sense of humor when you're a vagipreneur, is you know, when you hear these <laughs> Viagra ads and, you know, if you have an erection lasting four hours, that's so meaningful to men. You know, they run, and 50% of the people who take the ED drugs don't even have erectile dysfunction. It's performance enhancement. Women, and again, I'm making gross generalizations that tend to be true, um, women don't think about performance as it relates to sex. They think about performance as a mother, as a wife, in their job, in, you know, how well they take care of their family and their house and the 17,000 other jobs they have. Performance is really a very male definition of sex. So when we hear, if you have an erection lasting four hours, we laugh thinking we could walk into Giant Stadium and say, show of hands, raise your hand if you're the woman looking for a partner with a four-hour erection. <laughs> you know, and we're looking for the woman who says, Oh, pick me, pick me. That's what I'm interested in. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> but thank just you. To I only use that example to illustrate how different the language is and the thought process, as well as the physiological response 
for men and women when it comes to sexuality. You ask 100 men what sexual satisfaction is, and they'll say an orgasm. You ask 100 women, and you'll get 130 answers. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Because not all women are capable of having orgasms, and so they don't want to make that the bar. Sometimes they don't even care about that. It's the cl- closeness or the connection or the whatever, whether it's physical or emotional communication. We, we happen to just be more complex. That's the reality. That's true. That's true. It's like when you look at experiences that you've had that are either positive or negative, they can be mm-hmm. positive for a wide variety of experiences, not just the one end goal in mind. Right. I don't know if you've ever seen Men Are From um, Defending the Caveman. It's this one-man show that traveled around the country, you know, several years ago, and it was just so hysterical. The one example that I always love, and it, it rings true for, you know, any couple that's been together a long time. So you go to a party or you're there for two or three hours and your husband is speaking to another guy for two or three hours and you're speaking to the wife for two or three hours and you get in the car and you say, so what's new with him? And the husband says, nothing. (laughs) And the wife says, well, what do you mean nothing? They're getting divorced. She's pregnant. Her sister-in-law ran away with the tailor. You know, I mean, she has all the information in the world because we just communicate so differently. And I was really surprised to see how many of the stereotypes about men and women and their basic differences not only apply, but are exaggerated in this world of sexual satisfaction. So let me ask you, we're going to get off topic just for a little bit here, uh, because there was a question that's really intriguing to me, and then we'll need to go to commercial break in about a minute. But what's a typical day like for you as the president of this company that handles this type of product? <clears throat> there are usually a lot of laughs. Um, there, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, just it becomes like any other business for many hours in the day, and we're looking at the financials, and we're looking at our business performance, and we're looking at different programs we're working on, uh, and how they can be successful. But at some point in every day, there is someone, whether it's a vendor, whether it's an employee, who thinks they're making a joke about sexuality that we've never heard before. <laughs> So today we were in a meeting where a vendor asked one of the people in the meeting about their personal sex life and history. And Mary and I said, wait a second. You know, we're all for talking about sexual satisfaction, but we have one hard and fast HR policy, and that is that we don't talk about our personal stuff. And we weren't even the ones being asked. But it is just... So funny. That is you know, amazing. When we, when we want to amazing. try, you know, a new flavor, a new fragrance, we send out a survey and say, anyone who's interested, go home and try this and let us know anonymously You know, Rachel, you I think. hate to cut you off. I have to take us to commercial break. Okay. My name is Sandra Beck. I am the host of Motherhood Talk Radio along with Christy Holly. We come back from the break. We'll be welcoming Rachel braun Sherl of Zestra. <laughs> Mom, here's your show, Motherhood Talk Radio, giving you interesting, inspiring, and influential information as you navigate everything from child care to corporate formation. This is Motherhood Talk Radio, and we'll be right back after these. The Trick to Getting Published with your host, Florence Blake. Friday nights at 9, 8 central on toginet.com. Flo has seen it, done it, and now can share from her experiences as a newspaper staff reporter, feature writer, freelance editor, and college writing instructor. And now Flo has authored a system whereby her students enjoy a 90% success rate in attaining publication of their manuscripts for the first time. In just four years, she has over 800 of her own articles published in national magazines, newspapers, and anthologies. Author of several books, including the powerful memoir, The Sicilian Nobleman's Daughter, Florence has advised and edited professors, deans, PhDs, and hundreds of students' writings before submission. And now it's your turn. Join us Friday nights with your questions. Most of Flo's students say they've learned much and thoroughly enjoyed the journey. It's The Trick to Getting Published with your host, Flo Blake. Friday nights at 9, 8 central on toginet.com. 
Mark Lipinski is coming to Toginet. It's Creative Mojo with Mark Lipinski. A live two-hour show Wednesday afternoon starting at 3, 2 central on toginet.com. Creative Mojo. It's fun, entertaining, informative, inspirational, and illuminating. Lipinski has worked on such shows as Oprah, The View, The Joan Rivers Show, and Ricky Lake. He's busy, but he's got the drive to share with Creative Mojo, dedicated to the modern crafter and crafting lifestyle. Dive into the info and enjoy everything from celebs to entertainment news to recipes, quilting and needlework, knitting, painting, woodworking, Christmas crafts, and so much more. This show boldly encourages you to discover and harness your own creative spirit by living creatively every day. For more on Mark and the show, check out marklepinski.com. Don't miss the fun. It's Creative Mojo with Mark Lipinski. Wednesday afternoon starting at 3, 2 central on toginet.com. Welcome back to Motherhood Talk Radio, the most powerful voice in women's issues. For more information, check out the website, motherhoodtalkradio.com. Now, let's get back to the show with your hosts, Sandra Back and Christy Holland. Hey, mamas, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Christy Holly, and our guest today is Rachel Braun Sherl of Zestra. Zestra is a product of female sexual enhancement, and you can learn more about this product at Zestra.com. And Christy, you had some good questions uh, when we were talking at the break about the product, as the, like where to get it, the, you know, what it costs, and etc. So go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we're, well, well, well. <laughs> as you look at me like a deer in the headlights, well. well. Well, I was this show. Well, I was wondering more of like what is it safe for your partner to? Uh, yeah, ingest? edible if ingested. Okay, um, <laughs> you know, and does does he, would the your partner feel any enhanced satisfaction using this product? Yes, um, but the the primary satisfaction he experiences or she experiences for that mm-hmm. matter, but in this case, if it's a man is her increased desire and satisfaction. So in our clinical study, um, you know, the majority of men said whatever she was using, I want her to keep doing it because either (laughs) it was his experience that he did a better job, her response was better, she was more into it. Now there are some men who get a physical sensation. We Mm -hmm. haven't tested that, but we hear anecdotally a tingling or a warming or, you know, a sense of, aliveness, if you will, vitality, but the primary benefit for him is her increased enjoyment, which increases his enjoyment more than a physical sensation. Okay. So would, when we use this, we can expect to feel it like tingling and, and a warmth sensation well, also? At, or? We call it the Zestra Rush. So once you apply it, within three to five minutes, you start to experience the Zestra Rush, which Again, you ask 100 women and you get 100 different adjectives, but women say it's tingling, it's warming, it feels like there's activity there, I have, you know, pleasurable sensations. So they use that kind of language. Oh. Well, is it a cream or an ointment or a spray? I mean, what? It's a patented blend of um, botanical oils and extracts. So it's more the consistency of an oil and we say each occasion, you know, you, you use essentially less than a quarter size amount of Zestra, but it is, it is, um, it's thinner. It's not really the consistent, it's much thinner than a lubricant. It doesn't have the same physical sensation on your body or on your hand, um, and there's very little required to do all this magic. Okay, and does it stain your sheets, just in case? I just want to know. Uh, We have lots of women using it with white sheets and never hearing complaints. Okay. And I think think, uh, the distraction factor is higher with the other activities. Um, Okay. But we, you know, we talk about this little green packet. It comes in packets, and we say, you know, it's a packet per experience or per occasion, if you will. I love um, that you have packets. We have packets. We also have this fabulous bottle that we just introduced a couple of months ago, which looks like what your, you know, high-end moisturizer would come in. So it's this bottle that's not much taller, I would say, than two inches, and it's little and it's discreet, as are the packets. You can throw it in your pocketbook or keep it in your nightstand, you know, so you're at the ready whenever the um, 
mood strikes. And that's the great part of it is you don't have to prepare. It works so quickly that if you decide on a whim, although it, there's evidence that women decide on Thursday whether they're having sex over the weekend, but if you do decide <laughs> on a whim, you know, you just apply it or your partner mm-hmm. applies it and you feel the sensations. And so you'll know within a matter of minutes if you're going to be what we call one of the lucky seven, the seven out of ten women who report improved arousal, desire, and satisfaction. Wow. Well, and that's so much fun because it's like it, I like something that's spontaneous because that's the thing is a lot of these things require like advanced prep time. Exactly. Right. And that's just not how it happens. <laughs> well, and I like that you can take it in your purse and go through a metal detector without <laughs> like everybody goes, Oh, we're way Whoa. under the limit. We're Yes, we're way <laughs> under the liquid limit that uh, the airlines um, insist upon. So you can take, you can travel with Zestra with total peace of mind. I you know, the it. other piece that we haven't talked about is, you know, for some women, this, this, for a lot of women, this still is a private discussion. So most people purchase it online from Zestra.com, and you can get whatever information you want about the product, about female sexuality, about studies, about what doctors are saying, about what users are saying. So, you know, you really get the comfort of knowing that you're using a safe, clinically tested product and you purchase it, and it arrives in your home in a discreet white box, so there's nothing on it if you want to surprise your partner or you don't want a neighbor to know what you're ordering online. It comes in a white box that just says Sempre on it. Oh. And are they, we, is it sold in stores as well? Yeah, we're sold in some retail stores. We're, some, we're sold in um, some Walmarts, depending on uh, where you are in the country, um, Rite Aid, which not, tends not to be more East Coast. Bible Belt, I would imagine. I'm sorry? I said, is it really make a difference, like the different regional parts of the country? Like, Oh, yeah, absolutely. We do sell quite a bit in the Bible Belt, actually. When we really? look at geographies, it tends to be the Northeast, the Southeast, Texas, um, and California. Right on. Mm. Which is, you know, not surprising. Um, and yeah. Some of them are in markets where people are real comfortable talking about it, and some are in markets where... You, do, you die before you talk about it, but people are still in long-term relationships that they want to keep active and interesting. Well, it's one of these things, Rachel, and this is what I love about what you do and what Linda Franklin does and Lou Padgett mm-hmm. does, you know, with, like, frankly open speaking um, about sexuality, especially female sexuality, because it's not something that women talk about. We don't just sit down over coffee and go, you know, contrary to Sex in the City reruns, exactly. you know, talk about these things. Um, but, you know, even Sex in the City opened a lot of doors for women to language some of the things that was going on, but obviously it was a television show and what you guys provide is really amazing because you're giving women an opportunity to talk about something that's been historically kept private and you're able to make a difference and for that and we really do try to talk about it directly you know not like samantha or carrie bradshaw who you know have these fabulous big lives i mean this is for a woman in her regular life and so we try to be and I think both of our personalities are such, you know, very direct. Here's what it is. Here's what it does. Here's how it makes you feel. It's up to you. You can give it a shot or not, but it's not, there's no smoke and mirrors because one of the things we're really hoping to do, like what you have both done so successfully, is to create an environment where there's a comfortable dialogue to be able to talk about almost anything. Our lives are very complex and they're very busy. And we sort of just don't have time to beat around the bush. We sort of have to get to the point and get the information that we need. Well, and we're able to deliver it, I think, on the Internet in a way that's private and secure, and you totally get it with your packaging, you know, that this is something, you know, even though we hope, you know, 10 years from now, it'll be something women everywhere will feel comfortable talking about. But as a groundbreaking company like yours, you know, that discretion really makes it uh, easier for a lot of us, especially those of us who are more shy with this stuff, um, you know, to be able to not only use it but talk about it and be aware of it. Yeah, the other thing we do if you, want to, if you want to just listen to some of the conversation is obviously, you know, we're on Facebook as Zestra. We're on Twitter as Zestra. You know, there's lots of conversation. Every day there's a new article about some aspect of female sexuality that's being investigated. You know, there were a lot of studies over the last 6 to 12 months that a more fulfilling sex life helps you look better and live longer. 
You know, so we huh. post this kind of information all the time, and women have the same reaction that you just did. Really? I had no idea. That there's things just, you can enjoy that much and that actually make you look better? How nice is that? Oh, yeah. Well, that was the thing, you know, when we were coming up with our, you know, opening chit-chat. You know, it's interesting, you know, it's like we talk very openly. I remember when sunless tanning creams, you know, became popular a few years back. And, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to try this. And it was the big secret because I didn't want anybody to know I used it. Now I'm like, oh, yeah, I use it. I spray it. You know, all these things. Oh, I heard it. And you you have to turn yourself into a pretzel (laughs) to get it on your back. and. But we can be so comfortable talking about these things, and um, you know, and it comes from women like you and Mary, who are willing to put themselves out there and to raise awareness and to offer these products to people to make a difference. And you know, and that's something that's really pretty cool. Well, it is really cool, and we appreciate you know what you've done is so important in, in giving women a platform to have a place to talk about some of these things because as much information as is floating around there, you you still want to know that there's someone you can talk to who you can trust. Yeah, I'm always amazed how people look at the product reviews. You know, I'm still one of those. I'd rather call my friend to see what she thought about the product. But, wow. So you know, are, there, still... are, there any, are there any adverse reactions? Like, you know, we joke about the four-hour erection with men. No. As, like, no, there are no drug drug interactions. There, there are no drug drug interactions that that have been found in the clinical studies or in the five years that the product has been commercially available. That's so great. the worst thing that'll happen probably is if you know it either works for you or it doesn't, and then you don't use it again if it doesn't. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's amazing. It's amazing, and it's so simple. And I love that it doesn't require you to take any sort of internal drug. It's just topical, like you would put on Neosporin or you know anything else that you put on your body. Um, I think well, it's that's a little more really fun great. than Neosporin, I'd like to say. Oh yeah, <laughs> I was just thinking way like, more fun, a lot more. But fun it's, than it's true. That you can travel with it so easily. Yeah. So Rachel, let me ask you: What is the one thing you would like? Uh, women to take away from today's show if they remember nothing else other than buy zester go to zester.com what one thing would you like women to take away with from you as your gift to them today you can have better sex effortlessly wow i know (laughs) that is a great gift that is a super gift it's an early christmas present (laughs) it's an everyday christmas present yeah, it's an everyday Christmas present. We like that. We like that. Well, our guest today has been Rachel braun Sherl of Zestra. You guys can check it out at Zestra.com. We want to thank her for raising awareness on women and sexuality because that's not an easy thing to do, and she does it so well. If you missed today's broadcast, you can check us out on iTunes under Motherhood Talk Radio. You can also check us out at MotherhoodTalkRadio.com or pick us up in podcasts on our prior broadcast on our host station, toginet.com. That's T-O-G-I-N-E-T. My name is Sandra Beck, and I'm the host of Motherhood Talk Radio along with Christy Holly and Rick Swanson. We had a great time today, and we hope that you will tune in next week. And uh, we invite you to check out zestra.com, Z-E-S-T-R-A, and no promotion was accepted for this program today. We are just bringing it here for your own enjoyment. Thank you for being a part of Motherhood Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Christy Holly. Gontoginet.com. Join us every Tuesday as we 